Hey everyone, this is Justin from justin to data In this video, you'll follow along and build your first interactive dashboard in Python. The Plotly Dash library can help us build beautiful looking, interactive, and easy to share dashboards all in Python. Before we start, I'd like to mention that you can also take our video course, Python Interactive Dashboards with Plotly Dash on Udemy. You can click on the link in the description box to go to the course. It includes step-by-step -step explanations, more advanced functions, all with real-world dataset examples, so that you can learn more details and depth about Dash. Dash is a free Python library that's built by the same company that created Plotly. With Dash, you can develop web-based, customizable, interactive dashboards in Python without writing HTML or JavaScript. Each Dash app has two main parts, the layout and the callback function. The layout determines the visual components displayed on the Dash app, while the callback function is a function that connects the Dash components and defines their interactive features. Now let's go through an example to make an interactive data visualization using Dash. Before building the Dash app, we need to explore the dataset. We recommend doing this in Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab, since it has an interactive interface. We can code and examine the results easily. First, we'll import two libraries, Pandas for loading and manipulating datasets, Plotly Express for generating data visualizations. Dash is built on top of Plotly, so it's easy to put Plotly figures into Dash apps. This is why we're using Plotly instead of other Python data visualization libraries. In this tutorial, we'll use the Avocado Prices dataset from Kaggle to build our example dashboard. You can find it in the description box below. So let's load it and take a look at its summary. As you can see, the dataset contains information about avocado prices. Suppose we want to present the average prices of different types of avocados for various geographies across time, which means we want to focus on presenting the information of the features date, average price, type, and geography. What are the different type and geography of avocados? Let's take a look at the categories using a value counts method with drop na equals to false. This will show us the unique categories for these variables and if there are any missing values. We can see there are two categories of type and many different categories for geography. Since there are only two avocado types, we can plot their average price time series on the same line chart. Let's try to plot such a figure when geography is Los Angeles. The MSK variable here is a Boolean series with true when geography has value of Los Angeles. And we're using the Plotly Express PX library to plot the line chart based on the filtered LA data. This is a nice chart, but it's only for one geography of LA. How can we make it easy for users to explore this information for a different geography? If we have a drop down with options of geography, the users would be able to choose among them. Then, according to the geography selected by the users, we can display the above line plot to them for that specific geography. While this is not possible with Plotly, it's something Dash can help with. It's time to use Dash. After exploring the dataset in Jupyter Notebook, we recommend using one of the Python editors to implement Dash apps. When working on Dash apps, we want to focus on building and running the dashboards as a whole script, so it's easier to test in Python editors such as PyCharm. We're using the PyCharm Editor Community Edition. It's free and has many useful features for writing code in Python, but you'll also be good to choose your preferred Python editor. It's also necessary to use the pip install dash command in your terminal to install dash before using it. Now we can head over to the Python editor such as PyCharm. Here is the code of our Dash app. Let's go through it little by little. First, we need to import the libraries. The necessary libraries for a dashboard are Dash, which is the main Dash library, also importing input-output from Dash.dependencies, so we can use them without referring to Dash.dependencies. Dash HTML components, which is used for building the layout, which contains components for every HTML tag, such as the H1 heading. Dash core components, 
which is used for building the layout that contains various higher level components such as the dropdown and graph. And of course, pandas for loading and manipulating data sets, as well as Plotly Express for creating the figures. Then we can load the data set as a pandas data frame, which is the same as earlier. Please make sure you save this Python script and the CSV file in the same directory to avoid setting the path in the read CSV function. We'll also create a dash app called app. The app building process always starts from the layout. So we need to design the look of the layout first. The layout has a structure of a tree of components. We use the keyword layout of the app to specify its layout. Then using the two libraries dash HTML components, HTML, and dash core components, DCC, we can display three components on our dashboard. An H1 heading, as a title of the dashboard, we specify its children property to be the text avocado prices dashboard. A dropdown menu, dcc.dropdown, based on the geography. We give it an ID, geo dropdown. The options property specifies the options of unique geographies the dropdown has. And the value property is a selected geography when we first launched the app. We made it here as New York. And a graph component, dcc.graph with ID price graph. As you noticed, we are using an HTML div component to hold our three dash components. The HTML div is a container component, which is always used when we have multiple dash components in the layout. We put the other dash components as a list inside its children property. After setting up the dashboard's look, it's time to look at the callback function that makes it interactive. The callback functions are Python functions, but they get automatically called by Dash whenever its input changes. As a result, the function runs and updates its output. The two main sections of a callback function are the decorator, which starts with at app.callback, and the function itself, which starts with def. This callback function makes the plotly figure dependent on the dropdown. Within the decorator at app.callback, we specify the output and the input objects of the callback function. They are both the properties of dash components. In our example, the output is a figure property of the dash component with ID price graph, which is the DCC graph component set in the layout. While the input is a value property of the dash component with ID geo dropdown which is the dcc.dropdown component set in the layout. After specifying them, we use them within the function below. Within the parentheses after def update graph, we named the input as selected geography. This corresponds to the input component ID, geo dropdown component property value. Then within the body of the function, we ask the function to generate a filter data set, filtered avocado, based on selected geography, and create a plotly line figure called line fig based on this filtered data set, with x axis as date, the y axis as average price, and the color parameter determined by the type of avocado. And the title of the chart is also an f string based on the selected geography. The function returns this line fig as the output, which corresponds to output component ID price graph component property figure. For example, the user selects Los Angeles in the dropdown component. Its value property will become Los Angeles, which means the input function of selected geography equals to Los Angeles. This change will trigger the callback function and update the output as a line figure only for Los Angeles, which is returned as the output corresponding to this here. That's all the work needed for the callback function. To complete the script, we have this code to run the server. By default, the Dash app runs on our local computers. As mentioned earlier, we need to run it as a whole script. So we saved this whole block of code as a Python script named Dash example. Then we can go to the terminal to run it by typing in the command python dash example.py. After running successfully, 
You should see the below messages in the terminal window. Remember that Dash creates web applications, so this URL is a default address to access the app. You can click this link and see your first Python interactive dashboard opening in the browser. Here you go. We can select different geographies within the dropdown and see the updated graph. If you haven't gotten the chance to run your app, take a look at the link in the description box. We have deployed this app on Heroku so you can interact with it as a user. So hopefully you've learned how to create your first Python interactive dashboard with Dash. Again, to learn about how to set up more Dash components such as a range slider, radio items, data table, or to customize the look of your dashboards, to create a grid layout dashboard, and more dynamic interactive features, please take our course on Udemy. You'll also get an overview of HTML and CSS within the course, so you'll have a much better understanding of Dash. All right, thank you. Feel free to leave any comments below.